Uh, hello, friends. Uh, this is Ashton. So in today's live coding project, I'm going to build a clock in and clock out application uh, with Google Forms as a front end, and uh, we have the back end uh, with a Google spreadsheet to to track uh, your data. So basically, designed like this. So we have two forms. Uh, one is for the clock in and another one is used for clock out. So we have an, a list of users or a list of names here for your employees or some users uh, for your application. So here right now it's a fresh start. So if you check your logout, uh, you don't have any more names here. So if I try to clock in with a user like Abby, and uh, I'd like to select a uh, selfie so basically upload an image you can if you are using phone you can take a picture so let's submit and this should be submitted and uh, the, at the back end we have the name and uh, we have this clock in and uh, we don't have any a clock out right now and this is the uh, selfie uh, for the clock in right Okay, and now if you check this log out, and if you reload this page, I have Abby here, but if I go to the clock in, I don't have Abby here because Abby was removed from this list, and uh, Abby was added here for the clock out. So Abby right now can uh, is ready to clock out. So if I clock out Abby here, And uh, I can clock Abby out. And if I try to submit another response, I don't have any more names here to be uh, clocked out. And if I check this form, uh, Abby is back. And Abby is back and is ready for another check, uh, clocking and clock out. Okay, so this is about so as you can see you have a little difference uh, for this timestamp as you can see uh, this one at the ninth this is tens so this is the application and here we have a formula to calculate uh, the hours for Abby so you can you can create some report based on this data and then you have the name you have the uh, clock in uh, timestamp and clock out timestamp and you have the hours so you can make some dashboard for this uh, application and uh, in this example I only collect uh, the name and the selfie so I think you also can add more information if you like so basically this is the uh, basic functionalities uh, for this kind of clock in and out functions or applications uh, with Google Forms okay and some script and uh, I'm going to build this step by step, including create, creating these forms. And uh, you should be able to follow uh, this video. And uh, at the final uh, section of this video, you should be able to create your own clocking and clock out function uh, or, or applications, just like I did here. OK, so we can get started. OK, so let's create the first form for a uh, clock in so here in this folder uh, i go to new and google form and uh, let's create a blank form so this should be used for the clock in clock in for clock in Okay, so this is the name. So you can you can you can basically a name here, and uh, I'd like to disable these settings for the email address. So in the responses, I'd like to take uh, turn this off, so we don't need to collect the email address. And uh, the first uh, question here it should be a drop down. 
So I'd like to say, so this should be a drop down list and uh, with some options here. So right now I just put my name here and uh, I'm going to have a list of employee names or usernames and I'm going to update this field uh, automatically. So right now I just place my name here, but, but it's going to be updated later with a script, right? And I make it required. Okay, so also this title is also important and uh, because we're going to use this name to, to check to identify this this uh, this input because this is a very important field for the names, okay. And uh, I'd like to add another field. Maybe this field is for a file upload, uh, but I'm going to call this as photo or selfie. Probably this is correct. So, so basically. Uh, if the user wants to uh, clock in, uh, if you want, you can make this required. So they need to take a selfie of them and then upload the selfie to, to this form. All right. And you can change this type to image and uh, maximum number of files only one and the size 10 megabytes should be fine. So for me, I'd like to make it uh, optional or required, so it depends on you. So make it uh, required. So these are two a field, and you can add more information for the clocking. Maybe you'd like to add. Uh, let's duplicate this. Maybe this is for department or something like that. But uh, if you have a, have a name list, you should have a, be able to have this information at your backend. So I don't think you have to use this. So let me get rid of it. So to make this form very easy, so you have a name for the user or employee. Uh, when, they log, clock, uh, when they clock in, they need to have a name and a selfie uh, picture. So photo, something like that to be uploaded to this form. Okay, so this is about the clocking form. And I'd like to give it a color for the theme so the user know which one is cl clocking and which one is uh, uh, clock out. So for this one, I'd like to select uh, a blue color for clocking. Okay, so this is a form we just created for the clocking. And then now let's create the clock out form. So in the similar way, you go to Google Forms and uh, create a blank form. So uh, first of all, let's change the color to uh, a green color or red color, something you like. So let's make a green color. So the clocking is a blue and uh, and the clock out is a green color, so we will see. And uh, let's also take this uh, response uh, email collection off. You can keep it on if you like, but the user need to enter the email address if you turn this on. So it could be annoying for them. So for this uh, title, let's say clock out. Okay. And the question here, so here this is also very important. Uh, you need to have the same field and uh, with the same field type with a drop down. So this name is going to be uh, use it. All right, so make sure this field is the same field with the same title, the same name. Okay, this title should be the same and the type should be the same. So here, I put my name here as a just a placeholder and it makes this required. Okay. So basically every time a user is clocked in, uh, we're going to have a script to update this field. So if I clocked in here, I'm going to remove this name from this list and I'm going to update this clock out name field 
I'm going to add the clocked in person's name into this field. So if a person clocked in here, and this, his name is going to be removed from here and added here. So that's basically my uh, my design for this clocking and clock out stuff, right? And here I also need to add a a field for let's say file uploader, and uh, I'd like to call it a selfie, another selfie for the clock out. I know it's annoying, but uh, some companies want to do that. So I don't I don't like to do it. So make it required, and uh, you change the drawings to uh, the, the the type for this file to image should be fine. Okay. So here, if you want to add more stuff about uh, maybe something you did today, uh, maybe uh, you want to add something like uh, the work you did, something like that. So you can add more fields here. So that's going to be no problem, okay. And let me delete this. And I'd like to rename this to clock out selfie because we have another selfie field in the clock in. So maybe I need to update this one as well. Clock, uh, clock in selfie. We have a clock in selfie and a clock out selfie. So basically every field, if you have a same field, except this one, except this name, okay, and this name should be the same because they are sharing the same data. Okay, so I think right now we have the form set up. And, and of course you can add more fields if you like. But these are two mandatory fields I like to add for this checking and checkout. Uh, application here with Google Form. All right, so the forms are set up and we can start building the script. And uh, the next step is going to, uh, I'm going to connect uh, both forms to one single Google spreadsheet. So to do that, uh, you go to the responses and uh, you click on this create spreadsheet. And uh, for the first one, I'm going to create a new one and I'd like to change the name to uh, clock in and out uh, responses. Out. Okay, I'm going to create it. So uh, we have a file uh, created here. So right now, this form is uh, connected to uh, the clock in form. So if you check here, form response one, but I'd like to change this name to clock in. So we can see the difference because we're going to have two forms connected to the same spreadsheet. So go to the uh, clock out form and that uh, responses and click on this icon for the Google sheet and uh, select the existing spreadsheet and uh, select the uh, file we just created. So which is this one, I think. And uh, yeah. So right now, uh, it's connected, and I'd like to change this to clock out. And uh, both of them are right now are connected to our uh, uh, spreadsheet like this way. So you have a clock in, and uh, you have a clock out. And, and right now, we can handle the responses from the, uh, from the script. And I'm going to combine. Uh, this input into one single uh, responses tab. So I'd like to create a tab called uh, responses or whatever name you like to responses. So basically, uh, this response is going to be a combined result for each clock in and clock out. Okay, so uh, when we have this repair uh, prepared and then we can create a script to do uh, basically the backbone for this application. I'm going to handle some stuff here. So here in this uh, spreadsheet for these responses and go to the extensions and uh, let's open the app script editor. 
and that is going to create a new script project for us. All right, so let's rename this project. Clock in and out. Out. And uh, I think, and let's add uh, live coding O draft here. So you can name this code here. And here, and uh, we think we only have need to have uh, one function here to handle all of this stuff. So basically, my idea is like this. So basically, we need a function to catch. So basically, we need to create a trigger to catch the responses from the both forms. So every time we received a form submission from clock in or clock out, and this function is going to be triggered. So let's define a function called on form submit. And uh, put an underscore here at the beginning. So this function is going to be triggered every time uh, this form, clock in form is submitted or this clock out form is submitted. All right, so we can create a trigger and bind the trigger to this function. So go to the triggers. And also you can create a function to do that, but uh, since this is just a one-time job, we can create manually. So as you can see, uh, we only have one function, so this is selected automatically. And just select the header from the spreadsheet, and on open, change it to on form submit. And uh, every time, any form, you know, because we connected two forms with this uh, spreadsheet, so any of them, uh, if we, any of them have a submission, and uh, this function is going to be triggered. Okay, so this is the trigger. So let's just save it. Hmm. Loading data. And then you need to do the authorization. Okay, so now we have the trigger created. And uh, we can work on our code. So here, uh, we have a parameter here called E. Basically, this is the parameter called event. So for short, it's usually, we usually use the E here. So this event is a form submit event. And uh, if you try to run this function manually, you're going to get an error because this event is not defined if you if you run it manually. So this function only be triggered when the form is submitted. Okay, so you cannot run this manually. So I'd like to put an error message here. So if event or make it an E, if there is no E here, I'm going to throw an error. Uh, you can run this uh, function manually. Manually, uh, it only can be triggered by form submission. So I uh, I know a lot of you guys uh, have this this issue. Uh, on my other project because I didn't handle this uh, because I assume you know that so if you try to run this manually so you will see some message like this so if I didn't do that uh, you will see something like uh, event is not e is not defined so an undefined error like that so because you cannot run this function manually like this way and this function only can be triggered by this trigger we just created. So as you can see, form spreadsheet, so the event is going to be the form submit. And if we have a form submit 
from the any of the form which is connected to the to this spreadsheet and this function is going to be triggered and a form submit event is assigned to this uh, function so let me show you what I mean here so I'll go back to the script and I'm going to console or log this event here okay and I'm going to do a form submission here from this clock in so let's try to uh, for now I'd like to change this to not required so I don't want to change I don't want to upload an image here so let's try to do let's try to submit uh, so let's try to submit my name here and uh, try to create a submit okay so now it's created uh, the, 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 the re response has been submitted and here you see nothing right and if you go to the executions so here as you can see uh, this function was triggered as, as you can see the type is a, is a trigger so this function is basically run by this trigger not manually and uh, you will see uh, the, the log output here is the event object so all of this information as you can see uh, you have the data here and for the named values we have something like that and you can see we have the I mean, my name here I just selected and we have a timestamp and this timestamp is going to be the the time of clocking right and in the same way if the form is the clock out we're going to have a timestamp for the clock out so this cl uh, clocking timestamp and the clock out timestamp are going to be very very important for us so I'd like to collect this uh, object uh, which is called named values right so we can grab them from uh, grab the th value from the output so let's do a const name the value is going to be so we can destructure something like that uh, since this is an object and I'm going to grab the name the values and another step is called range uh, another object is a range object so basically this range is going to be if we uh, submit here so this range is going to be this range with these values right uh, so if you check the executions and then you check the data here uh, we should be able to see so this is the range object okay so with this range you can have the data and uh, you have the name the values All right so this is the most uh, important stuff uh, for this uh, the range uh, with the range we know which form is submitted so if it's a range uh, because with the range we can get the tab, get the spreadsheet name, the sheet name here. So if it's a clock in, we know this is a submission for the clock in, and we can handle the clock in clock in event. And if this is a clock out form, we can handle the clock out uh, data. So so that's something very important. And for now, I think. Uh, we can do something like this so let's define this uh, add some so let's call it a uh, parameter it's going to be an object so for this e and uh, for this range so it's going to be a spreadsheet app or range and this is going to be dot range so basically this range is going to be uh, and uh, we're going to have a named values uh, which is e named values and for this one it's going to be something like uh, uh, object array of object so it's an object so basically this is define the type of the values so here what we can do uh, we can check this range right and with this range we can get the tab so const not the tab the sheet is going to be range 
so we can get this sheet. Uh, so if we check return returns this sheet, this range belongs to. So so it basically if the, if we submit it with the clocking form and the response is going to be saved here. So this is a range and we can get this tab. Right? We have this tab. And uh, if we get this tab, we can get the the form URL. So let's const form URL equal to sheet dot get form URL. So this form URL is going to be the form which is connected to this uh, in, to this tab. So if you check the tools, then uh, here is the form you connected, right? You have a unlink this form. But if you go to this responses tab and you go to the tools, you will not see uh, these options because this responses is not linked to any form, all right? So if in that case, if there is no form link, that means it's a wrong, so right? Because we are, so basically this is not possible, okay? Because we this is triggered by a form submit event, so we can get rid, we can ignore this. So so this this should either be the clock in or the clock out. Okay. So I'd like to check uh, this form link. So let me show you what I mean here. So function uh, form URL. Let's do a test function here to show you what I mean. So let's get the, the const uh, form URL equal to spreadsheet.get active. Let's get active, get active sheet. And then let's get the form URL. And uh, let's console to log the form URL out. So you will see. So right now this one is active, right? So if I try to run this test function, and I grab, I got a URL here, and in this URL we have this ID. So this ID is going to be the so as you can see end with rxjy. So if I go to my clocking, so rxjy. So this is basically this uh, URL with the same ID. So I'd like to grab this ID. So I'd like to use this ID to compare which form is submitted. Okay. So let's make a const variable here. It's const uh, config. Let's say the first one for ID and uh, clocking. Clocking. So this is the ID for the clocking, or we say form ID. And uh, I'd like to add the clock out here. Clock out. So this is the ID for the clock out, I think. So this is ID, the form ID for the clock out. Okay, so now we have this both uh, ID here. So here we can check if form URL includes config.formID.clocking. So basically if this ID, the ID of the clocking form is included in this form URL, that means uh, this submission is from the clocking, right? So we can call a function here called uh, handle clocking, clocking response, or handle clocking, just uh, for short. And uh, here I'm going to call it handle clock out. So these two functions right now is not created yet. So I'd like to pass this parameter e here. So let's get rid of this. And uh, we don't need to use this one. So we pass this event object, and uh, we can handle the clock in and handle the clock out function here. So let's get rid of this test function as well. So basically, uh, this is the this is the the endpoint for any form submission. And uh, we receive, we basically use a trigger to catch the form submission. 
So if any submission is caught, and uh, we would like to get the, the, the range, and uh, from use this range, we get the tab, get the sheet, and from the sheet, we, we try to get the form URL. So if the form URL have the ID of clock in, then we handle the clock in. If the form URL else, so basically we here have two forms. So you have if you have more, you can do something like this. So else if, right? And I can do something like this. So let's change this to clock out, right? So you, if you have more, you can keep going this uh, if, else, if, else, if, like this. So in this case, we, have, we only have two forms. And uh, so if this is a clocking form submission, we handle uh, the clocking uh, event. If this is a clock out, we handle the clock out. And uh, the next steps are going to be we handle the clocking and we also handle the clock out. Okay, so first let's uh, handle the clocking responses. So here we need to create a function uh, called clocking, handle clocking, and we also pass the event. And uh, I'd like to get uh, the named values from the event object. Okay, so this is going to get the named values from the from the event. Okay, so this is a clock in. Okay, so after we have these values, uh, I'm not sure you remember. So let's uh, make a copy of these values. So just to give you an example. So it's going to be something like this. Okay, so for the named values. So let's test here. Uh, so we're going to have something like this. So I'm going to have a clocking selfie and the name timestamp. So this is going to be our values. But uh, for this timestamp, I'd like to change it to clocking timestamp or just change it to clocking. Right. So to do that, let's do const, not const. Let's just say, let's create a function to handle these values because as you can see, they're in, uh, they're in uh, array, right? I don't want to use the array here, but I don't want to change it to a single value. So let's can create a function to handle this. So function handle, handle named values. So values So values here. So I'm going to loop through this object to do to do that object or entries and uh, pass the values here and for each. So we're going to have a key and a value. And basically, I think I'm going to create a new object. So new values like an object like this. So new values, new values key equal to values dot join. I'm going to join them by a comma because they're uh, they're uh, mm, they're an array of uh, items. Okay, so as you can see, the timestamp going to be like this. So I'm going to join them by a comma. So this is going to be our new values. I'm going to return this new values. Okay, so, and uh, I'd like to do it here. So let's say values equal to handle uh, named values and pass the named values here. Let's add some empty rows here. Mm, so this is going to convert this value to uh, basically going to convert this array to a single value, okay? So this is going to be, yeah, okay. So here we have the values 
and uh, about our output. So I'd like to create output here in these responses, and uh, I'd like to get another variable here called sheet name here, and uh, I'd like to responses, and I'd like to copy this tab name here. So make sure this name can be found, or I'm going to create a new tab here. So we have these values, right? And uh, we can save. So here I'd like to say this is the name, and this is the clock in, and this is clock out. This clock in, clock out, and uh, clock in, selfie, and clock out, selfie, and I'm going to add another column here called uh, hours because we have a clock in and a clock out. We can calculate the difference between the uh, both timestamp, right? And we can get uh, hours for this uh, for this person here, right? Similar like that. So make sure this uh, header is exactly uh, in your form, okay? Because we have a selfie. A clock in selfie like this, right? And we have a clock in selfie. This one is going to be a calculated column, right? And this clock out is going to be uh, the value uh, because this is timestamp. I'd like to change this timestamp to clock in, right? Because we handle the clock in values here. So let's say values clock in equal to uh, values timestamp, right? So basically we assign this to basically make a copy of this timestamp value to and create a new value for the clock in. So in this way, we're going to have uh, values for the uh, clock in. And then we can output these values here. And since this is a clock in, we always want to add, since this is a clock in, so we always add, want to add a new row here, right? So to do that, uh, let's create a function to output this data. So create, so let's say output data, output response that's just called function auto, output response underscore and we pass these values these values are going to be an object right because uh, this is going to be used uh, for both clocking and clock loss so that's why I'd like to create another function to do that so function output and I'm going to take the values and here I'd like to get the tab the worksheet is going to be the spreadsheet dot get active and get by name. The name is going to be config dot sheet name and responses. So this is going to be the worksheet responses, and uh, I'd like to get the headers and records from this worksheet dot get data range and I'm going to get the values and this header is going to be this header and this items here right now there is no items it's going to be these records right so here I'd like to create So const uh, row data is going to be a function to create a row data. I'm going to have the headers here and the values. Remember this value is going to be like this, name, timestamp, 
is an object and this header is going to be array. So I'm going to create a row data and worksheet dot add range. We are going to get the range. So the range uh, is going to be the record, the row start is going to be record dot length plus two. So if there is no record, this length is zero, right? And if it's zero, we start from the row two. Okay, so that's why we add two here and star column is one and the number uh, so for the number of rows which is one and number of columns is going to be the headers or lens and we're going to set the values with this row data okay so this function is not yet created so create row function create a row data is going to have a keys or headers and values so here I'd like to do something like uh, headers not for each for each header header and index so if not, not, not for each as the map okay so return so basically I'm going to create a, a row of values a array uh, basically with the same quantity of items like the header so basically for uh, each name we're going to put a name value here for this clock in we have a clock in values like that so here we have a header right the header is like a key so like the name and for this name should be uh, in in these values, right? So let's say if values dot has on property. So remember these values is going to be the values we passed here. Okay. So in these values we have a clock in, selfie name, timestamp, and clock in, right? So if we have if this value have this. Uh, property with this header we are going to and else if it's else I'm going to return a new value and if we do have this header I'm going to return the values and I pass the header here so it's like this so basically this this object here this values object we're going to have something like name so if we have name header, yes, the name is actually in this header, right? And then we're going to uh, get the name from this va values object. And uh, if we have a header like uh, mm, clock out, since this is a clock in uh, event, we don't have the clock out, so I'm going to return a new value, okay? And uh, maybe I'd like to pass uh, current values like this because I'm going to handle uh, because we're going to combine the clock in and clock out in the same row right so when we're trying to handle the clock out we're going to we, we don't want to uh, replace the clock in with a new value but we, we replace the value with a current value right something like that and here if if we have so basically if we have the current uh, values and I'm going to pass the current values and with the index this index so if this header is name the index is zero and we pass this to the original value the current values to this index okay so this is optional and the return new so I think this is going to handle uh, this create row data function and uh, let me show you if this is working or not so let me try to recheck it again so handle the clock in we grab the name the values and uh, we handle the values and we add a clock in uh, with the timestamp and we output these responses to 
the responses tab. Okay, so let's try to do some console log here. First of all, I'd like to log the values so you will see if it's correct or not. Okay, and we can test it. So let's do a response for this clock in. So let's submit another and choose my name here. And I don't want to say, I don't want to write now. Uh, so this is optional. So let's try to submit it. Submit this form and uh, I hope no errors. Hmm, failed. Okay. Uh, I, and I cannot see any error message. Cannot convert and define a new to object. So add line handle name values 29. 29. 29 object entries handle so let's see where we okay this is <laughs> this is this is wrong so I think it's called name named values named values okay sorry let's do it again so this is live coding and uh, we check this log uh, in these executions. Okay, failed again. And uh, what's the error here this time? Uh, this is what I mean. You cannot uh, run this function manually. You need to submit uh, the form every time if you want to test. Okay, align a value join is not a function. Uh, okay. I think I know the issue. Uh, at line 30. Join line 30. Join is not a function. So let's try to console the log. Uh, for this is the key and this is the value. So let's console log, log out this value and uh, want to, to check if this is the array. And handle named values is going to be named values. A lot of tests, sorry. So created another submission and the field again. Value is zero. Why do we have a zero value? Uh, let me check. Of course, you cannot uh, join zero. Then uh, let me check. So here is a named value. This is pretty weird. Why do we have a value here called zero? So name the values. So let's go back to the code. So this is name the values. Handle the name the values. New values. So let's say, let's console log all this key and the values out. And uh, if, if uh, let's say type of value is uh, object, or you can say something like this, array is array value. So if it's array, I'm going to join uh, join this with a comma and if it's not array I'm going to return this value directly I don't know why it's an error there so let's try to do it again so this is annoying because every time I need to submit so let's try to check the log 
So this time seems no error, but I need to validate if this is a... Okay, the key, this is the key, so this is absolutely not correct. And uh, we got something like this, this is pretty weird. So this is absolutely not correct. And uh, something wrong with this named values. And uh, let me console.log this named values here. No, you cannot run this like this way. So let's try to do another submission. And check the execution. You cannot run this. This is the object, and then we got a key like this. I think something wrong with this function called uh, entries. Uh, where is my handle name values here? So entries for each key value. So I think I forget to destructure uh, this key value pair. Okay. So I think this time should work. So uh, just a tiny mistake here and uh, waste a lot of time here. Sorry about that. But that's live coding and uh, this is a uh, bad experience but it's good experience for learning uh, as bone as you can uh, now we have this uh this this uh name here and uh clock in and no values for the clock out right so and if you check the log here so this is the value and this is the key and this is the value and this is the final value. Uh, we have timestamp, clocking, uh, no selfish, and the name, and the clocking. And we output this data to the uh, to this tab here, right? So this is about the how we handle the login. But it's not completed yet. But we need to uh, make sure the name uh, the name is removed from the form, remember? Uh, where is my name? So handle the clock in here. So after we output data, I'd like to remove name. So this is going to remove the name and uh, we need to have the form uh, so basically we're going to remove name from the form so I'm going to pass the name and the name is going to be the named values or the values and uh, name so I'd like to make this name a constant it's config dot header name so let's define this name here header name and this name is very important uh, this is the name here and you find it here in the form right this is the name so if you want to change this name and you also need to change this value here because this is the key uh, for all of this information we need to we need to do uh, we need to update this uh, this field Basically, we want to add, we need to remove the name uh, from this drop-down list. And 
we'd like to add it here every time we uh, so let's try to create a function called uh, update name fields update name field because we have two fields right uh, one name fields one in the clock in and one in the clock out so this function I'd like to create it here uh, function so first of all we'd like to get the name the forms right so cast form clock in uh, is equal to form app dot get or open by ID we have the form ID remember and the clock in and make a copy of this for clock out and this is for the clock out and we have both forms here and then we have a name so this is a name uh, for the users so I think we have two scenarios so if this is uh, if this is clocked in, this is going to be uh, a, let's say, we had another parameter, is clocked in, okay, by default is true, okay, so like this here is true, like that. So right now it's locked in, so let's get uh, the name field as const name item name item clock in equal to this dot get and all this get item get form item by title so let's pass the form clock in and the title is going to be config dot header dot name okay so we use this and uh, name item clock out is going to be get form uh, item and this is going to be the clock out and config this name so this is name item in the form right and this function let's define it here okay function and uh, we need to have the form and uh, the title add parameter form app dot form this is a form okay let's return form dot find get items dot find item item dot get title equal to title so basically if the title is found I'm going to get this item so this is item but I'm going to as a, I'd like to change it to as check as drop down or as list items as list item because we are using this as a list item so this is our so if is clocked in else so if this is a clock in right we need to remove this name from this uh, named values item so do we need to I think we still need to so this is the item uh, field so const current names equal to add clock in and get choices and uh, I'm going to map it uh, item item of get value so this is going to get a list of names from this uh, from current item and I'm going to remove uh, the name from current current names right 
how can we do that? Uh, we should have, uh, and I'm going to filter and value, and value uh, is not equal to the name. So this is going to filter the names in current uh, items, and this is the, the names after updated. And I'm going to set the choices or choice values. I'm going to pass the current values or names. So this is updated name, right? We basically filtered this out. And uh, this is for the uh, this is for the clocking. Uh, name item clocking and uh, also I'd like to const names uh, clock 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 out is called to name item clock out dot get choices and I'm going to map it so item item dot get value and I'm going to push this new name too and uh, I'm going to sort it and finally name the value clock out that set choice values and uh, names clock out and uh, let's write to name clock in so here basically, if this is a clocking, right? And we're going to remove the name from the clocking form and add the name to the clock out form for this name field, for this name item. Okay, so on the contrary, if this is not if this is not for the clock out, uh, is is not for the clocking. If it's for the clock out, we can do the same thing. But on the contrary, right? We need to. So basically, if this is the clock out, I'd like to. If I clock out with my name H10 here, I'd like to re remove this this name from clock out and add it back to the clock in, right? So here, uh, names clock in. So basically, uh, we do. We replace this. Uh, I'm a little bit lost here. So here is name names clock clock out right. So basically this is name clock out and the new names clock out and we get the choices and we get the values and filter them and filter them by name. So this is names clock out and uh, this is name clock out. And this is names for the clock in. And uh, the item is going to be the uh, name item clock in and get the choices, get the values, and push them, going to sort it. And uh, this is for name. Yeah, I think this is, this is uh, how we do it. And also, I'd like to sort, uh, sort this as well. So we can have an order, alphabet order for the names. Okay, I think, I hope this didn't break anything. And uh, so what if we don't have any names? So I'd like to put a default value. So no more names. I say no more names. So this is, uh, a default value if there is no more names uh, in in the list because here uh, here I only have one item here if I remove this one and uh, we don't have any options here so I'd like to put a message here uh, to do that if the length is equal to zero right 
and uh, I'd like to push uh, the config dot no more names all right and do it for this one for the clock out as well so let's make a copy for this put it here and this one put it here so name clock in name clock out so basically there, be, there is no items in the field I'm going to put something like that all right so let's try to test from this function and if this is working fine and we should be able to move to the clock out function the handle clock out function so let me get rid of this line first for now and uh, let's try to do another clock in and this time i'd like to select the image and submit okay so it seems like it's working and uh, we have this uh, selfie clocking selfie uh, URL image for this URL right and uh, if I check the log uh, let, let me check the log to make sure okay still something wrong name item get a uh, name Seventy five, seventy five. So let's say push and sort in here, filter. Sort. Sort here. This is not correct. It should be this like this. So you can check the code work like this. So this is for the clock in. And uh, so this one is absolutely not correct. This should be this. Okay. So even we have the data collected here, but the form is not updated. So if I, okay, this one is updated, but I think this one, let me check. Mm, I still have my name here. And uh, let's, this time let's try to do, uh, let's try to, Add uh, another name here. So if I can add in this one. So let's say we have another name like uh, Taylor and another like uh, James. Add more name here and uh, Smith. Okay. So let's try to do Taylor and submit. Submit another function. And Taylor is still here. And I have Taylor here. At least uh, this form has been updated successfully. But the clocking, uh, maybe let me try to reload. Okay, it's working. Uh, let me check the log. So it's working without mm, any issues. And we have Taylor submitted. And uh, if I try to clock in with James and submit, and uh, I should have James here. 
and James is gone. Okay, seems like he's working now. But I didn't have time to check all of this code because uh, it's kind of uh, tricky stuff here. So let me get rid of get rid of all of these logs. Another log here. Okay, so for now uh, we handled the clocking successfully, and the uh, next step we're going to handle the clock out. So if we find a gems here, I'd like to put the clock out time here and hours here. So similar like that. Okay, so now let's handle the clock out. So let's create this function, handle clock out, and then we have the event. And uh, as we did for the clock in, we can copy this line of code. And uh, I think I can get rid of this, make a copy. And uh, I'd like to put the clock in name here for the header, clock in, and uh, make a copy and uh, clock out. This is a clock out. These two headers uh, I defined here because they're not from the, the form directly. Okay, they are defined by us. So here, these values, clock in. I'd like to replace it with config.header.clocking and uh, let's replace this with clock out. So when we uh, when the form is uh, submitted from the clock out form and this function should be triggered uh, not triggered because we handled it here so if this form URL uh, includes this cl clock out and we're going to call this function right and uh, we also handle these named values and we output this responses values and this this one going to be a little bit different I think because we are not append a new values here at the new line so if James clocked out I'd like to put the timestamp for James, the clock out here, and we're going to calculate the values, uh, the hours between these two values, right? And uh, we're going to grab the selfie uh, for the clock out. So this, this field, this field, this field. So that means we need to find the name, right? Find the James by name, okay? So I'll put responses. Let's check this function. So this is going to be a little bit tricky. And here, I'd like to is clocking by default. Let's say it's true. So we handle both scenarios, uh, one is clock in and one is clock out. So let's find this function. So true, and here is false. Update named fields. And uh, we also need to call this function, update named fields. And here, let's like, change it to false because this right now is not a uh, clock in. We are handle the clock out. Okay, so uh, we can focus on this part. So focus on this output responses function for the clock out. So this is a function, and this is the raw data. Raw data. So if is clock out, if is clock in, this is our raw data, and this is our output to the raw data. And else, if it's a clock out, we're going to handle something else here. So 
I'd like to check. So basically, if it's a clock out, I like I'd like to find the name right from the bottom to the top. I'm going to find the first name, which is match, right? So I'm going to do const find uh, find name find equal to, and this is a record. I'm going to get the name index is equal to the headers dot index of uh, config dot header dot name. So this is the name index and find the name record dot let's say for for let row index equal to records dot length because we search it from the last one to the first one. So in a reverse order. And row index uh, should less than larger than zero. And the row index minus minus one. And uh, const name equal to the record and the row index and uh, the named name index. So this is going to be the name to be checked. Name or name in name in row. Okay, make it more clear. So if name in row. Uh, is equal to the values so the values are going to have a name field right so if this name is found we say and we find this index, right? So if the name, so if name is James, and uh, this is the first item we found, is going to be the length of this array, which is three, and which is this row index is three. And else, If we find we're going to break the loop and uh, let's try to define uh, const e, let's say find row index equal to zero so by default is zero so if we find it let's say equal to uh, row index So if, if it's uh, James, that means we find the it's going to be three, but actually it's four. So we need to plus one. So this is zero. Uh, let me check. This is two, actually. And this is length. We start from the length. It should length minus one. Okay and uh, equal to, so this is row index. And here for James, we, we have three items here, right? So this uh, length is going to be three and the index is going to be two. And if it's two, the row index is going to be plus two, so it's going to be four. So that's basically some calculation. So find row index, I'm going to plus two, okay? So this is going to be our, so if we find, and if uh, we need to check the, because we want to we want the user to be clocked in and uh, clocked out in the same date 
okay we don't want to change uh, to, to want to uh, clock out in another date something like that so we only check the date which is uh, today right so if we have uh, something like uh, we have uh, 4th February we don't want to check this item because they're not in the same day okay so to do that and uh, I'd like to put const clock in uh, clock in const clock in index is equal to headers dot index of config header dot clock in so this is the clock in index and uh, I'm gonna to do something and uh, const clocking in row records row index and uh, clocking index and if clocking Uh, we can say if so this is a clocking in the row right and uh, we also have an item clocking item timestamp so if dot to data string to iOS mm, So I'm doing here is something like uh, let me open the console. So basically, I'd, I'd, I'd like to check the date, two dates, or we can create a function here to do it. Uh, lu, lu, lu. So if is same day. So clocking row and uh, values timestamp so this is a clock out timestamp and this is a clock in timestamp in in the row okay like this if it is the same day and if it's not the same day I'd like to break this loop That means uh, we didn't find, not didn't find, we are in some date which is not currently the current date, okay? Because you may have a ton of uh, record in this data, uh, in this tab, and they, you don't want to check all the day, all the items because uh, the last item is always at the, uh, the last, at the, at the bottom row, so we check like this. So basically, if it is not the same day, is same date. So let's create this function. Function is same date, date one, date two. So compare we just return at date one or we can use something like uh, add parameter date day one day two day one dot to iOS to date string equal to day two dot to day string and going to return so basically these two dates I convert it to a date string and compare if this both two day string are exactly the same so if they're the same that means it's the same day and if they're not the same it's not the same day okay so this is a function to 
And here, if we find this row index, okay, that means we find a record which is clocked in, right? If we find a name, and we can update our values. So here, finally, if if we find uh, is larger than zero, then we need to update the values, right? And uh, let's do const row data equal to create row data, and we're going to have headers, and the values is going to be the values for the clock out, and then we have the current values. The current values is going to be uh, records. So <laughs> here it's kind of tricky. So this find row index yeah. and minus two. So this is weird, right? So because as you remember, we add a uh, we add two to this row index when we find a uh, row index. So basically, if this is the row index is two, uh, that means James. 0, 1, 2, and the find row is going to be 4, right? Because we, we added 2 to this row index, and this is the find row index, which is 4. But if we want to get the record, so record is at least start from the row 2, and to get the gems, we need to re, uh, minus 2 to get uh, this record for the current values. So this current values is going to have this existing data for the name, clock in, clock out, something like that. So let's get rid of this one. This one. And let's output the data. But we need to remove this. Uh, we need to replace this with a find row index. And the headers or lens set row data to row data, and this is going to be. And uh, I'd like to add a formula here for the hours. So to do that, we can create. Mm, okay, before we do that, let's try to test if anything uh, is wrong or not. So let's try to test this clock out function here. So let's try to send a clock out. So I'd like to clock out myself. Okay. And uh, let's select a picture. And uh, let's try to clock out. Seems like uh, we have some issue. Let's check what's wrong. Is clock is okay? So, uh, absolutely, this is not correct. Is clock in? So let's try to do it again. Clock out. I'm not sure if I still have my name here. Okay, I have my name here. Let's try to clock me out. Clock me out. Let me check. Still something wrong. No lock. Day two to day string is not functioning. Console dot log day one, day one, day two. So maybe the date is a value string. So let's try to do it again. Mm. 
let me check what's kind of a value there in the date. So let's check this log here. So this date is a date and this one is a string. So to handle this issue, where is my function here? So if date one type of day one is equal to string, then day one equal to new date, day one. Same for day two, okay, if it's a string. So it's just a quick go, it's just a quick uh, fix for this issue, but uh, we'll see what's going on here. Let's try to do this clock out. Clock me out. Clock me out. Seems like there still have some other issues. Consign <laughs> const variable is not optional. Okay. Mm. 79. 79. Okay, this is, uh, I, I define this as a constant, so it should be a uh, let. Make it uh, changeable. Okay, it should be a variable like this. Okay, I hope this is the last uh, issue. Clock me out, please. Clock me out. Let me check. All right, finally, I see a good message. And we have this log off, finally. And uh, if I try to submit again, I don't have my name here. And uh, let me check if I have my name here. I have my name here back. All right. So that means, let me get out, get out of some logs. And, uh, and to validate if there, if there are any errors. So it seems like there is no error. There is no error. That means uh, our clock out function is also done. And uh, the only thing we need to do, uh, we need to apply a, a formula here. So let's say, okay, so this is magic. Well, well, we have something like this. This is AI. So we C2 minus B2. And uh, if we want to change it to hours, so since they are, they, these are, in, uh, I think it's in milliseconds. So I need to divide by 1000 and uh, multiply 60 and uh, 60 again. So this is going to be the hours. All right, so we can copy this function and then we go back to our file, uh, not as a file, the script. Uh, we go to the function called uh, create, create row data. So here we can Mm. So values have our, our own property. Else, mm. so we can do something like here. Uh, remember, this hours is defined by us, so it's not in the the form, right? So we can do it here. So this this value is from the form, and this else that means uh, this header is not in this uh, values. So if or we can do a if here, if or else, else if, uh, else if, else if what, El else if header, header equal to config header hours. So it's not, not defined here. Let's define it here. Uh, hours. So this is hours. And then we can make this value as a formula. 
where is my hours? So if this is hours, I'm going to return a formula like this. But I'd like to replace this with another formula. So it's row and a column. And uh, is uh, left one, so it's a minus a negative, a negative one. So RC. Uh, so this is it's uh, at the position, so negative two. So basically, this is your your position, right? This is your uh, the cell of a formula. So if it, if it is C negative one, that means this this column. And is if it is C negative two, is this column, right? So we we use this this value, clock out value, uh, minus this value. And uh, I'd like to change at an if here. So if only if we have uh, this value, so only if not only if the clock out value is bigger than one, a bigger than zero, then we're going to calculate this value. And else I'm going to put a zero here just in case, just in case we don't have any value for the clock out. Okay? So this is the design for the formula. If I hope this can work. And let's try to log out Taylor. So Taylor add a selfie. Select one. All right. So as you can see here, we have this formula. And if I copy this formula and replace this one, it seems they are working fine. And I like to form, uh, format this data number, maybe like this. Give it to digital uh, decimal. All right. So right now this is working. You can check in and check out like this. And finally, let's check out uh, James. Uh, and since this is a live coding and uh, I didn't have time to validate all of this code, so if you are trying to use this code, uh, there might be some issues which I don't see here right now because uh, it could cause some problems. But right now it seems like it's working fine. And uh, this is the original form responses. So you always can validate it. And uh, if I had to clock out and no more names, that means all the people they are clocked out. And uh, if you go to the clock in form, and they should have them here. Right. Okay, so basically, uh, to start this project, start this form, you always need to maintain your employee list in here, okay, uh, in the clocking form to begin with. All right, all right, oh, and also you can, uh, you can create a script to do it. So let me show you. Uh, so let's say names. Let's say names. So I think this this could be very easy to do. So let me show you. And uh, let's add a variable here called names. Okay, so you can do it here. So let's say. Aston, Billy, Chris, Doris, Ella, Frank, and uh, G, G what? Green is a color, not a name. Okay, let's say we have these names uh, defined here. And uh, we can create a function too update 
the name fields. So to do that, uh, we create a function called update function update clocking names. So const form equal to form app dot get form by uh, get active form not get active form open form by id id going to be config dot form id clock in const name uh, name item equal to form dot not form we have a function remember get form item by id we pass a form and pass a title the title going to be uh, the config dot form not from header dot name so this is the title and uh, as list item right so name item dot set choice values and the values const names equal to config dot names not names names yes this is names so and uh, you can sort the name right just in case they are not in a very good order and uh, you just set the names to this uh, to this value and this is going to set uh, the so every time you uh, update it or let's rename this update names form names form names so form clocking I'm doing this because and clock out this is going to reset the, the form okay so name item clock in names go to names and the name sort name item clock out so this is clock out and uh, I'm going to set the name values to only values going to be config dot no more names so basically I'm going to uh, to reset uh, these names right and the with uh, I'm going to reset the clock out so let me show you what I'm trying to say here uh, I talked too much today so update form names so you try to run this function update form names so if I go to my clock in and uh, check the clock out so here is no more names and here okay I should have some names here that's weird let me check the code. Okay, so form clock out, form clock out. So form clock out, I need to replace name. So try to run it again. Reload clock in. Yeah, you can see uh, this name have been updated and uh, this here you have no more name for the clock out and uh, finally and the last thing I need to do I think some of you maybe prefer to have these names in in a list like this so let's do it here names and the names let's say Abby Billy, Chris, Doris, Ella, Efeli. I cannot find a name for star with G. Gary. Okay. So let's get these names. 
basically replace this with names. Okay, so let's get a tab name here. I'm sorry. So names, names. So let's replace. Let's create a function to get names. Get names. Const worksheet equal to spread so dot get active and get sheet by name. The name is going to be the config sheet name dot names. So if there is no worksheet, I'm going to return config dot names. So basically, uh, if this if this tab sometimes if this if this names tab is not in the uh, in this file, just in case someone deleted, it, I'm going to re replace the, uh, return this uh, default values we define if defined in here hard coded here. Okay. And if we find this worksheet, let's get a const uh, values equal to worksheet dot get data range and get display values. And I'm going to return. I'm going to slice start from one because I'd like to get rid of this header okay and uh, I think I can just return this slice and I'm going to map name one because we only have one column here right so this is the first value so let me show you const names equal to and I'm going to return the names and I'm going to console load this name console to log names so let's try to run this function so I I add an underscore at the last uh, as a last uh, character here so I cannot see this function here so that's why you see a lot of functions help functions I add an underscore uh, as the last uh, digit in the function name. So right now, if I try to run the get names function, uh, so I get a list like this. So uh, this is the function to get name. So I get get rid of this con uh, the log, delete it, and uh, we use this get names function here, replace this and get names. Put underscore here and uh, add underscore back. So if I try to run this update, uh, I should have the names from here. And uh, I have Gary, last one is Gary, right? So this is to update uh, the function, update the names in the form. So I'd like to uh, add this function to the menu so to do that let's create a function called on open and uh, spreadsheet.get UI I'm going to create the menu and the config app name and I'm going to add item which called uh, update form uh, update names in forms I'm not sure how to name this add to UI so this is going to update form names or just update form names so it's going to update both form okay remember and uh, let's run this function is going to create the menu for you mm -hmm. okay app name is not defined let's define this app name clock in and out so line 3 so now we have this menu here and we can run it from here to, to reset uh, the names so basically, 
uh, every new day should be the names should be reset just in case somebody forget to clock out or clock in. So you can manually reset it or you can create a trigger to run this function to reset the names for this form. So every morning, maybe before 8 o'clock, so you can run this function at uh, 7 o'clock every day. So your forms, the name is going to be reset and uh, your employees or your users can start clocking and uh, clock out. All right. So this is about, and as, I think that's all about this uh, live coding project because I'm doing this uh, step by step and I made some mistake. So it's going to be a long video. So if, if, if you are trying to learn uh, something like this, and uh, I think it's very good for you to practice a project like this. And uh, you basically create some functions to do all of this stuff. Not a lot of code, but you get the idea and uh, you can make something like this. All right.